In the last 24 hours, the IDF's operational activity in Khan Yunus has resulted in the elimination of dozens of terrorists. This has been done according to well-established procedures that began with taking the enemy by surprise and overwhelming them using a combination of superior technology, training and equipment. Meanwhile, on the northern front, the Iranian-backed Lebanese terrorist group Hezbollah has begun launching swarms of terror into the skies of northern Israel while the IDF continues to pound Hezbollah positions, rocket launch sites, weapon storage areas and staging grounds. On yet another front in this war, the Houthis of Yemen threaten to target strategic targets in Israel including natural gas fields, air and seaports. Let's dive into the details. I'm Yair Pinto and this is your Boots on the Ground report about what is happening in Israel on the 292nd day of the war against Hamas, Hezbollah, Iran and all the terrorist proxies in Yemen, Iraq and Syria. In a statement regarding the current operation in Khan Yunus in the Gaza Strip, the IDF spokesperson's office said on Tuesday evening that the divisional combat teams of the 7th Brigade, paratroopers and the commando formation under the command of the 98th Division began a divisional attack in the last day in the Khan Yunus area in the southern Gaza Strip. The combat team of the 7th Brigade led the divisional attack and eliminated terrorists by firing tank shells and directing fire from the air. During the attack, Air Force aircrafts attacked over 50 terrorist infrastructures including munition depots, observation posts, buildings used by Hamas terrorists and the route of tunnels in the area was attacked as well. One day into the renewed IDF offensive in the city of Khan Yunis, there are reports of dozens of terrorists eliminated and extensive damage to the terrorist infrastructure in that city. This has been accomplished despite the IDF operating with a severe disadvantage as it needs to warn the civilian population before initiating any attacks on the terrorists. This makes it very difficult to maintain the element of surprise which is so important to any military operation. The IDF has established procedures that include encircling the area of contact before warning the civilians and providing a corridor for them to exit the area before initiating action against the terrorists. There is no guarantee of success even with these procedures, but the rate of success has greatly increased since they were adopted. However, some IDF reserve officers are claiming that the procedures are not always followed correctly and sometimes terrorists can escape the encirclement and possibly even smuggle Israeli hostages out so that they can be kept in captivity. However, battlefield assessment and after action reports indicate that the IDF is succeeding in its mission to eliminate the terrorist threat and push back the efforts by Hamas to rebuild its infrastructure in Khan Yunis as well as other parts of the Gaza Strip. According to the Hamas-run Ministry of Health in Gaza, there are approximately 70 dead, some of whom are women and children, and that at least 20 other people have been wounded. It is important to emphasize that the Ministry of Health in Gaza does not distinguish between armed terrorists and civilians. In all of their reports, they always say that each and every Palestinian casualty is an innocent civilian who was heartlessly gunned down by Israeli war criminal. With that in mind, the IDF reported on Tuesday that tanks have entered the eastern part of Khan Yunis after informing the residents of the eastern humanitarian section to evacuate to the west due to expected activity against terrorist infrastructure. When the IDF entered the area, the residents evacuated and following this, the IDF announced that 30 terrorist infrastructures were attacked and terrorists were eliminated through airstrikes and tank fire. The Air Force also attacked IDF warehouses, observation posts, underground tunnels and buildings used by Hamas. In a related story, Elon Musk, the owner of the company SpaceX as well as the X network announced that Starlink satellite that enable a connection without Wi-Fi infrastructure are operating above a hospital in Gaza City in the northern Gaza Strip. Musk also noted that during the process, Israel and the United Arab Emirates supported him. So please continue to spread the truth, share our videos on YouTube and subscribe to this YouTube channel. And if you want to directly support us so that we can continue to bring you quality content about what is happening in Israel, please donate to our work 
through the link that you see on YouTube or go to our website at www.tbn.org Israel. Switching to another front in this war, in recent months, a dramatic change was observed in the operational activity in Judea and Samaria. The terrorists have changed their tactics in response to the change in IDF tactics, and this is making it necessary for the IDF to change tactics once again. An example of this can be seen in an operation on Tuesday morning in which IDF troops in cooperation with the Shin Bet and the border police attempted to arrest a suspect in the city of Tulkarem, north of Jerusalem. The operation ended with an exchange of fire in which eight terrorists were eliminated, including one who was carrying a rifle while dressed in the uniform of a paramedic. This is an example of how the terrorists shamelessly use civilian infrastructure and even clothing to try and hide their military activities. And of course, they will also use images of those incidents to try and make false claims about Israel targeting innocent, unarmed civilians. However, intelligence penetration of the terrorist gangs by the Shin Bet combined with close coordination between the ground units and the Air Force enabled the security situation to remain stable and prevented the terrorists from gaining an advantage. In recent months, the IDF has begun to adjust its tactics, reintroducing airstrikes to the toolkit it uses against the terrorists and that brings us back to Tuesday morning's operation in Tulkaren. The operation that led to the elimination of these eight terrorists incorporated all the tools in the toolkit, culminating in the strikes by remotely operated UAV. One of the eight terrorists eliminated in this strike was identified as Asraf Nafe, the head of Hamas in Tulkarem, along with a senior terrorist leader. An IDF assessment of the security situation in Judea and Samaria includes a statement that the increase in airstrikes against individual terrorists is causing panic in their ranks. It is causing them to alter their patterns of movements and daily conduct as well as their methods of organizing and planning their operations. The IDF assessment added that we see that they have changed their form of movement and move individually or at least in squads of no more than two or three people at once. In the past, we saw them assembling in groups of 20 to 30 terrorists and sometimes even more. Now, they are simply afraid to gather. Finally, the assessment claims that we recognize that they are afraid to move with cell phones. We have seen another phenomenon in which they place shadow nets on balconies, roofs and even in allies to make it difficult for us to detect figures and hit them. The IDF reports being very satisfied with the results of their new tactics which are making it much harder for the terrorist organizations and gangs in Judea and Samaria to plan and execute attacks against Israelis and Palestinian civilians. The IDF forces are currently operating all over Judea and Samaria and there are reports of an increase in clashes with local residents who like to throw rocks at the armored vehicles of the IDF. This is kind of the Middle Eastern version of what is sometimes called virtual signaling but it has the potential to quickly and unexpectedly turn into something much more serious. So please be in prayer for the Israeli security forces who are trying to maintain a stable and peaceful environment for everyone. Here at TB in Israel, we will continue to update you about the Judea and Samaria situation. I am constantly being asked by viewers and supporters how can I help and support Israel during this time and I'm proud to introduce an organization that really saves lives in Israel, and that includes Jews, Arabs, and anyone else who needs help. I'm talking about Magen David Adom, the medical first response organization that is on the front lines in the south of the country and in the north. They are true heroes, standing up in the face of danger every day. Magen David Adom is entirely funded by donors, and they need your help to pay for ambulances and medical equipment training and protective equipment for the brave volunteers and more. So support them through the links in the description of this video. Now back to the news. Switching our focus to the northern front, the Iranian-backed Lebanese terrorist group Hezbollah has continued firing rockets, anti-tank missiles and UAVs into northern Israel and has begun to target communities further and further south into the heart of Israel. 
Of course, the IDF and the Air Force have hit back hard and will continue to do so as long as Hezbollah continues to target Israeli communities in the Galilee. On that note, I'm happy to report to you that the IDF's ability to defend against attacks by incoming UAVs has improved. In the last 24 hours, the rate of interceptions for such incoming weapons has been nearly perfect and improvements continue to be made. Each encounter between the incoming weapons and the defending air defense systems are analyzed so that improvements can be made in real time. The IDF is in a learning race, so that is possible on the one hand to detect launches in real time and on the other hand to intercept drones from short ranges and in difficult topographical conditions. It is very difficult, but the IDF is winning this learning race and getting better at shooting down drones that Hezbollah is launching at us. Both the Iron Dome and airborne fighter jets are used in interceptions and other systems might soon be integrated into the defense systems as well. To sum up, we are finding out the best way to defend against terrorism the hard way so that others won't have to. And as usual, everything that the IDF is learning in these engagements will be shared with our allies and partners. Meanwhile, there are rumors that Israel and Hezbollah have sent a message to the mediators that they will agree to begin negotiations for a ceasefire if one is reached in the Gaza Strip. This is according to a report published this week in the New York Times and based on three Western sources privy to the details. However, a statement from the IDF spokesman said that the army is ready for a full-scale war against Hezbollah if that's what is necessary. Here at TBN Israel, we will continue to report on any developments in this area. So please continue to spread the truth, share and follow us and take a minute to click the follow button and subscribe to this YouTube channel so people will know what is happening in Israel. We conclude today's report with a look at the threat from the Iranian-backed Houthi rebel group which controls most of Yemen. In the last 24 hours, they announced that they are preparing to move to the fifth stage of their war against Israel, targeting the ports of Ashdod and Ashkelon. At the military level, it is probable that the Houthis' ability to receive arms shipments from Iran still exists. The port of Hudeida, until the moment of the Israeli bombardment, received about 80% of the products, goods and fuel shipments imported into the area controlled by the Houthis, where two-thirds of Yemen's residents are concentrated. The initial estimates say that it will take between six months to a year for the Houthis to repair the damage caused by the Israeli airstrike on this boat so that it can once again be used to import large volumes of cargo. As the fires are beginning to be put out and the smoke is clearing, it can be observed that 40 of the 43 fuel tanks at the port were destroyed or heavily damaged. Two of the cranes used to load and unload cargo from the ships were also destroyed along with several warehouses that the Houthis used to store missile components, UAVs and rocket fuel. This is according to sources within Yemen who have knowledge on the port. However, a report this week in Saudi media portals indicates that although the strike caused severe economic damage to the Houthis, they still have the ability to import weapons from Iran. This is because there are still two operational ports in Houthi-controlled territory, Salif and Ras Issa. The report also said that the decrease in the level of humanitarian aid and a severe fuel crisis may force the Houthis to allow the entry of fuel and gas from Mariv to Sana during the coming months. So please continue to spread the truth, share and follow us and subscribe to this YouTube channel. One more story we have to report to you today and that is about the video that was released showing the kidnapping of Matan Bena, a resident of the Gaza border communities which was attacked by Hamas on October 7th. In the video, this young Israeli man can be seen being held between two terrorists on a motorcycle as it enters a crowded area on the outskirts of Khan Yunis in the Gaza Strip. Large crowds are seen following the motorcycle and cheering at the sight of the Jewish loot. According to estimates, this is documentation from the first days after the kidnapping in what appears to be the transfer of Matan to the place where he was held. Matan's phone was recovered by the IDF in Gaza and it still holds the last communication he had with his family. This includes a text he sent his uncle saying help my mother, that's the only thing I ask. 
A short time later, he wrote a text to his mother saying, there is someone here, I love you, don't cry. These messages are just heartbreaking and I want to ask you to pray for the hostages and pray for Israel. Pray for Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu as he addresses the US Congress this evening. As the voice of the State of Israel is important, pray with us that many people, as many as possible, will listen to the truth and pray for the IDF soldiers and the peace of Jerusalem. Hello, this is Mati here in Jerusalem with TBN Israel. This is Yair Pinto from TBN Israel here in Jerusalem. TBN Israel is keeping viewers informed with Israel-focused news, culture, and what God is doing in this land. Support TBN Israel today online at tbn.org Israel. Thank you.